does Jason look to kind of handle some of the you know shooting struggles he's having to start the series and two years ago you know against Golden State here with the passing and everything he else is he's doing and how important was it having Drew in that dunker spot for him to have a little bit of an outlet there in that first half? Yeah, uh, you know, before that, I think the play of the game uh, can't go unnoticed. The humility of our team is Peyton's shot at the end of the quarter, and you see guys around the league pass up on that shot or fake like they want to take it, and so that their, their numbers don't get uh, you know messed up. And uh, he takes pride in taking that, and that's winning basketball. So uh, that's the first and foremost. That should have been the first question: is the ability of our uh, everybody on our team to do different things that lead to winning. So. Uh, I'm really tired of hearing about one guy or this guy or that guy and everybody trying to make it out to be um, anything other than Celtic basketball. And uh, everybody that play, stepped on that court tonight made winning plays on both ends of the floor. That's the most important thing. And then to answer your question, Jason makes greatness look easy. He look, does it in a lot of different ways. He does it on defense. He does it on rebounding. does it on passing. does it on screening. Um, he's a tremendous player and hard to coach him. And he has the ability to affect the game in different ways. We're a different team. But uh, it takes everybody to do it. That should answer everyone's question. Jake over here on the left side. Joe, that being said, was there an emphasis for Jason to play more of a distributor role tonight? It seemed like that was kind of his personal uh, agenda out there. The emphasis uh, and where he's grown over the last two years is to take what the defense has given him and learn to impact the game in many different ways. And because of the type of team that we've had, especially this year, uh, he's seen a bunch of different coverages. And he's seen different matchups because teams have to match up with our team. And so coming into a game, uh, it's kind of similar to a puzzle. And he's done a great job learning how to solve the puzzle and do different things. Tonight, with the way that they were rotating and the way that they were defending, the most important thing was making the right play at the rim. And we were able to stay out of transition because our guys made that. And so uh, I thought he did a tremendous job doing what uh, the game called for. Dave, over here and left. Joe, you guys trailed at the end of the first quarter. Luca at 13. Drew ends up outscoring Luca in quarters two through four. What allowed you guys to get him going on offense? And and obviously, as you mentioned, a lot of you guys can do a lot of different things for you. But um, when a guy like Luca has it going like that, how how much of a boost is it to get an extra scoring boost from a guy like Drew? Yeah, I mean, listen, you got to take a look at um, we gave up a 26 point first quarter and then three 25 point quarters. In the 26 point first quarter, we followed a three point, we messed up the two for one and followed a three point shooter. For three free throws, Luca gets two shooting free throws. We give up a transition basket to PJ Washington. PJ Washington hits an above the break three. That's almost 70% of the points there. So that, like, the game was going the way we wanted it to go outside of the things that we can control. And um, I thought our guys took the poise and remained the mindset and the toughness to, to understand that. Uh, and then Drew, you know, it, it, it's connected. And that's what people don't realize is like uh, every guy on our team can't be at their best if this guy doesn't do that. So Jason's facilitating, Jalen's decision making. That leads to Drew's playmaking. And the way that they're defending us, we have to make multiple plays, we have to have multiple drives. And uh, I think Drew did a great job. Guys did a great job finding him. He did a great job attacking closeouts and then either kicking it back out for a second drive or getting, um, you know, an open shot. And then what he can do defensively, uh, it just goes back to everybody on the team. Uh, works to impact the game differently uh, every single night. Gary, all the way in the middle. Joe, sure, Gary Wash from Boston Globe. On the, the the play that Tatum was blocked at the rim, Derek ran from the Mavericks in front of the yeah. Mavericks bench and caught Washington. I mean, that's kind of that's that was sick. Yeah, it's uncanny. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we agree on that. I mean, what is it about him? What I mean, he he just makes an intangible plays. He hits the twenty seven footer to beat the shot clock like. It just seems like he is yeah. so reliable. I mean, can yeah. you touch on that? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I think it just comes back to he's not defined by one thing. He's not a – if you would ask, like, he's not a – he's just a little bit of everything. He can handle and pick and roll. He can score and pick and roll. He can stay spaced. He's not defined by scoring. He rebounds. He plays defense. He can play pick and roll ball handler, the pick and roll screener. He's had blocks on bigs. And so he's just another guy that's selfless and wants to impact the game in any way that he can. And it looks different every night. And I think the thing about him is the confidence that he has to maybe go some possessions or half or, you know, because teams are guarding us differently, his uh, frequency can be impacted because of that at times. But uh, he just fights to Im impact the game in different ways. John, over on the right. Joe, John Corrales, Boston Sports Journal. When a team is shooting, uh, struggling shooting from three, there might be a tendency to say, okay, we're just going to drive it. Um, but you guys continue to, when you did drive it, make those right reads yeah. despite that. What kind of discipline does it take to not get into that, that thing of like forcing missed layups that you keep yeah. talking about that could trigger another team's run and to keep 
kicking it out, and eventually a couple of huge threes fall down at the end. Yeah, listen, the most important thing is getting a good shot and not turning it over. So in the first half, even though we're missing, our expected points per shot was was much higher than theirs. And uh, I liked every shot that we took. And that's the most important thing is take what the defense gives you, whether it's a layup or there. And, um, and the second piece to that was uh, our offensive rebounding. And so I think we had an offensive rebounding rate in the first half of like 41%. And uh, died down in the second half, but like when you're not shooting it well, you still want to make the right play so that it doesn't impact the other end of the floor. Uh, but you have to have um, the offensive rebounding capacity to get extra possessions. And I thought we did a really good job of that in the first half, and had some timely ones in the second half. Joe, we're here. Joe Varden, the Athletic. Uh, did Porzingis reaggravate the calf, and what's your concern level for him for Game Three? Uh, no, zero. He's good. Next question, standing back left on two. Hold on for the mic. Joe, Kari Thompson, Boston Globe. You touched on it briefly, but the uh, buzzer beater that Porzingis, uh, that, uh, that Pritchard hit, um, huge shot, his only make of the night. What makes you trust him in those moments? Uh, he has the humility and the selflessness to not care if he misses it. He practices it and has an understanding of how a shot like that can impact the uh, end of a quarter and can impact the run that a team makes. So that uh, they had went on a run to end the quarter. And I thought that shot kind of uh, gave us a little bit of poise and a little bit of um, you know, momentum that we needed heading into the fourth quarter. That was big time. Tim, last question here. We got Derek White coming in next. You, uh, you subbed Peyton in right before that. Was the plan for him to run up and take that shot? That uh, yeah, yeah. No, and, uh, he takes pride in that, yes. And you guys, uh, you pride yourself on process a lot as a team. Obviously, in a night where you didn't hit a lot of shots, especially from deep, the the offense kept moving. You kept mm -hmm. trusting the shots, and you hit a couple late. Did you like the way you guys stuck with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you have to look at the other side of the coin. If you get away from the discipline and doing what you're doing in those situations, it's going to lead to other things. And um, I, and it goes to the trust that the guys have in each other. And so, uh, as long as you're taking great shots, you have to trust the process. On the back end of that, you got to have your offensive rebounding rate to help you. And when things aren't going that way, you have to keep them off the free throw line, which you didn't do a great job of. Um, but we had three 25-point quarters. So what usually happens is you have those empty possessions on the offensive end, your defense starts to wane, or you start to mistrust the discipline of your spacing and your shot selection, and you end up giving transition and getting cross-matched. And so uh, the guys trusted and stayed disciplined, and we were able to stay out of cross-matches, and we were able to kind of uh, you know, keep the game in, in uh, the, the, the way we wanted to play it. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Derek White will be up next.